Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this is something slightly different than normal, but on a scale of one to 10 for utter coolness, this is 11. So what we're looking at here are two Android devices running an application called Meshtastic. The two boards above the Android devices are T-Beam ESP32 boards, or in other words, they are LoRa transceivers. The Android devices are connected to the LoRa boards via Bluetooth. The Android on the left is connected to the top left LoRa board and the bottom right Android tablet is connected to the top right LoRa board. Now a feature of Meshtastic Android app allows you to send text messages between any other devices connected to the Mesh network. So here I'm just sending a message between the two devices via the LoRa boards as an example. Of course, these can have quite a good coverage. So realistically, you could be up to a couple of miles away from each other. I think the world record for longest LoRa communication is something like 200 kilometers. So let's take a closer look at these LoRa boards before we go into how to configure them. Firstly, you notice a nice little OLED screen. On mine, they came with the LoRa boards, but I did have to solder them on. There are only four pins to connect, so it's fairly easy to do. You'll also notice this small antenna, which is connected to the board via an SMA connector. My LoRa boards operate on a frequency of 868 MHz. Having a board mounted antenna socket means we can extend our antenna network if we wish to by using larger outdoor antennas. The power output on these are rated around 20 dBm, which is actually 100 milliwatts. Now this doesn't sound quite a lot, but it does work extremely well with line of sight, especially when working at 868 MHz. So on the board itself, there are three little switches. The one on the left is for the power button. The middle one is for cycling through the various screens on the OLED. And the one on the right is just a reset button, which will reboot the board when pressed. You'll also find a USB socket, which has two functions. One is to charge the battery. And secondly, when plugged into your computer, you're able to communicate with it via a virtual serial port. I'll talk more about that shortly. The rechargeable batteries, which can be used, are larger than the normal AA batteries, so make sure you get the correct battery for your board. We're well, talking of batteries, with the way in which LoRa works and this particular board, these can actually be left running for days on end without needing to be recharged. In fact, some people remote install these boards and use a USB solar panel, which provides enough power to keep the battery charged. These T-Beam boards also have built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, although it doesn't appear you can use both at the same time. If you have two or more powered on and configured, they should see each other and show this confirmation on the display. Now these boards also have built-in GPS receiver with a small antenna located on the back. You can, however, change this to a better GPS antenna if required, as there is a connection on the board. The GPS is used for keeping the time on the board and also sending GPS coordinates to other devices on the mesh network. Now, when you receive the T-Beam boards, they most likely will arrive with no firmware installed. Now, Meshtastic supports a whole range of different boards and has the appropriate firmware for each of them. To grab the firmware, simply head over to the Meshtastic website and follow the links to the firmware download. Now, all of the firmware versions available are listed as beta. This is because it's an ongoing project and pretty much worked on daily. For my install though, I'm gonna be using the alpha release as it contains some rather cool features, especially on the built-in web server, which I'll show you more about this later. So scroll down to the assets links and expand it and then download the firmware zip file. Now there are a couple of ways in which you can download the firmware to your T-Beam boards and each of those support Linux, Mac OS and Windows. There are some prerequisites which you will need to install before you can install the firmware. So I would advise to take a look here to see what's required for the operating system you're using. Now it would take too long to cover all of these different options in this video and it's slightly out of the scope. However, for this demonstration, I'll be using my Mac, which runs Mac OS. In a nutshell, Mac OS will need Brew, Python 3, Pip, and the command line version of Mistastic installed for this firmware update script to work correctly. This will also be the same for Linux and Windows, just follow the correct procedures. 
We will also be using the Meshtastic CLI app for configuring some of the device parameters before we can use it. Now, if you're not comfortable using the command line app, then the Android app also can be used for configuring the device settings once the firmware is installed. You may need to also install a device driver, but everything is listed on the website for your specific OS. Once you have the firmware downloaded and uncompressed, you'll see a file structure like this. Now within here, we're interested in two files. The first will be the device-install file. It'll either be .bat for Windows or .sh for Linux and Mac. And the second file we'll be interested will be the firmware bin file for your device. As I'm using one of the latest T-Beam boards, I will install the T-Beam 1.2.47 firmware file. And we need to copy the file name and then head to a terminal prompt and make sure we're within the firmware folder. With the T-Beam plugged into your computer and powered on, type device-install like this and then paste in the firmware file name afterwards. And when you press enter, the firmware installation should then start. Do not disconnect or power cycle the board until this is completed. Once the firmware installation has completed successfully, you can now press the restart button on the board and the Meshtastic logo should now be on the display like this as it's booting. Now on this boot screen, we can see the Meshtastic logo in the center, the current region on the top left and the installed firmware version on the top right. With the device still connected to your computer via the USB cable, we can now set some parameters before use. Now don't forget, you can set these same settings using the Android app, and it would simply be the case of Bluetooth pairing the Android device to the T-Beam board first. So firstly, we want to make sure we have a good connection and we can communicate with the device from the computer. So in the command line, type mistastic space dash dash info. Now this will pull back the info data for that node. Now assuming this has worked correctly, we can now go ahead and give this node a name by using the set owner command. Now I'm going to call this node Wi-Fi because this node I want to connect to my local Wi-Fi connection and giving it a node name of Wi-Fi will make it easier to identify. The next step is to set the region. Now this is important because as well as setting the region, it will also alter the frequency in which these balls transmit and receive on. Now as I'm in the UK, I'll be using EU868. There is also an option for EU433, and as a licensed ham radio operator, I could use 433 MHz without encryption if I preferred. But for this example, I'll leave it at 868 MHz. Now something that you can't do currently as of today when recording this video, you cannot set the Wi-Fi connection details via the Android app. So I'm going to have to do this using the command line app. Now remember, if you do configure this as a Wi-Fi client, you will lose Bluetooth accessibility. That just means you will not be able to connect to it from your phone. But as I'm going to be using this and connecting to it via my network, that's perfectly fine. If in the future that I wanted to connect to it via my phone, then I'd have to disable the Wi-Fi using the CLI app. So here we can see both of the Android devices connected to their LoRa boards via Bluetooth. Within the app settings tab, this allows which Mestastic device to connect to. This is also where you would change the name of the node and the region if you'd not previously done this via the command line app. As each of the LoRa devices have GPS, their location can also be shown on a map as shown here. Now, when you send a message on one device, any other device which is on the same channel and same frequency will receive that message. Now, there are many other settings within the Meshtastic software, which lets you cater for a lot of different scenarios. For example, the default message format is set to long and slow, meaning it takes longer to send a message. This would help with long range communications. However, if all of the nodes were quite close and you needed a quicker message throughput, the speed can be changed within the Mestastic settings. Now, earlier on, when I first set up my nodes, I configured one of them to connect to my local area network via Wi-Fi. This is so that I can access the inbuilt web server on that specific node. Now, using the pre-alpha firmware, the web server provides a browser interface to that node. And as you can see here, this is a demo of using the web app for sending and receiving messages. 
I must mention though that this is highly in development and as such features and the UI may possibly change drastically over the coming months. However, I think as it stands now, it does work really well. Although in this release, there doesn't appear to be a map showing the location of all the other nodes. Let's hope the next alpha release has this feature. The web app also has access to the device settings, making it easy to change features on the fly. You can also access the special plugins and the HTTP folder area where you can download files from the device. Now I would assume that uploading will also be possible in the future so that you can use your own web app code. In fact, the current beta version of the firmware does have this feature, but the web interface you see right here is only available in this alpha at the time of creating this video. Now one of the plugins which is available is called Range Test. Now this works by enabling range test on two devices, one to save the data to a CSV file and the other to periodically send a special message for range testing. Now, if you're interested in this plugin, I'll create a separate video on this. I've already tried it and it does actually work pretty well. Well, there you go, guys. I would like to say this was a brief introduction to LoRa and Mestastic, but there is so much to talk about with this technology and I could probably create many, many more videos on it. Now I got these boards from Banggood and they were shipped to me within a couple of days. So it was quite nice not to have to wait for them and I ordered three. Now I'll leave a link down in the description so you can see the exact boards that I purchased. And luckily they're only around $20 each. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe and like and until the next one, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.